Hey. Yeah. So here's some news. Okay. So, <clears throat> Apollonia. Yeah. You know, uh, inner circle stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's so trouble. It's yeah. It's been, I think it's been four years since Prince died. And she's been desperately trying to retain what little shred of uh, celebrity credibility that she has. So now, so now yeah. guess where she's turned her attention to? Huh. Paris Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. You coming to groom my daughter, Apollonia? She's <laughs> latching on. Yeah, because Paris has has a band with with a guy. I'm not sure if it's her boyfriend, but it's a guy, and he's very like Manuelly. He's like got long hair. He's beautiful, you know, androgynous guy. I saw some footage. Yeah. Um, from Apollonia's Instagram, mm. and. And she was just fawning over Paris, and the music is absolutely horrible. It's horrendous. It's really bad. I mean, like, <laughs> like not even just, like, really bad. It's just fucking, it's like, like, I don't know what she's doing. Boring is, was the thing that came to my mind. Like, yeah, it's so dull. <laughs> so are you so going to put me to sleep, Paris? Are you going to put me to sleep? So you play... Hey, Ruben, now that you've injected my milk, I wanna, I wanna get Paris in here to play a ukulele and put me to fucking sleep. That shit's boring, man. Fuck. Mr. Jackson, you don't even need the milk. You just listen to your daughter sing. Yeah. Yeah, just bring that bitch in here. And we'll just get that warmed up and all my pain's gonna go away and I'll just melt into my pillow. So, yeah, that's news. Um, okay. I don't know how inter interesting it is, but it's definitely news. Um, yeah. There's sort of a Charlie Sheen update. Okay. But I didn't really... I just saw a... Um, like television, like morning show kind of promotion. Yeah. And the headline was, you won't believe the transformation that Charlie Sheen has made. Oh. And I didn't, I didn't click it because I wasn't that interested, but I think it has everything to do with his new teeth. Yeah, me too. They're super shiny. He got them bleached or something. Got this new one. Uh, new I, crazy think got, I think he just got dentures. Yeah, that's right. Something. Yeah. Got something special uh, done. He has, right, and he has new, uh, new chompers. Right. So I feel, uh, I feel a kinship with, uh, with old Chuck now. <laughs> because, uh, tomorrow I too will have new teeth. How wonderful. We have top and bottoms. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. But here's the here's the scary part. Uh they're extracting thirteen teeth. Oh my like god, all, Marcus. All at once. And then <laughs> and then the new teeth will be put in place and then several months from now those will be made um permanent. Whoa. Yeah. So when I was I was talking to Maddie about interviewing her tomorrow, yeah, she she suggested tomorrow, and I said I don't know. I mean, I don't even know if that's gonna. Yeah, I don't think that's work. a good idea. No, that's I not just, a good idea. I don't know if it's a good or a bad idea because I just don't know like what condition I'm gonna be in. Yeah, like, yeah. I'd love it if like I'm like good to go, but it seems unlikely. <laughs> Highly. Did you tell her that though? Did you tell her what's happening? I did, and she okay, said good. Um, she said just notify her anytime, and uh, okay, she'll do it. But she seems awesome, by the way. Oh, and, she's and amazing! Like, really, um, 
strong like advocate, a, a true survivor, you know. Yeah, or, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or as I've been saying, a transcender. Like she didn't, she didn't curl up and die. No, uh, she, you know, survived and then moved on to continue this fight against um, you know, child abuse. Yes, kind of amazing. It's incredible. Um, yeah, and her article. The the article was, really was in, with uh, uh, that young young girl, um, JC from uh, yeah. Reddit. Yeah, that, she blew me away too. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, amazing. Wow. And then the transporter. <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, like I can't that. wait to. I can't wait to hear that. Everybody that I've spoken to, whether they know about this or not, yeah, whether they know about like TTI or not, are just like, whoa, like that's crazy. And I was on the yeah. phone last night with this guy, and I had to, uh, I had to totally put on my like journalistic hat. Where he yeah. was talking about, he was nervous about disclosure and stuff, and I had to sure. tell him that that I went to like I went to college and took a bunch of uh uh journalism uh yeah. courses and was on the uh as a part of the school newspaper and understood like that was it was important to protect sources or to keep them yeah. off the record if requested and all this stuff. And it was cool. I felt like like um like wow I'm really doing this because I was really doing it. Yeah. And uh, I think he's reassured enough enough now to, you know, go forward. He says very emotional, of course. Um, yeah. Because he was the, you know, he was like the enemy of himself. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine what that would be like. I, I can't like, imagine it. I can't imagine, like, coming out and then not, you know, like, I mean, there would have been that window in the beginning for me where... I definitely could have like fallen fallen into that again, and, or like my dad could have like forced me into that again. I definitely would have been able to go through, you know, like right into that. But as soon as I started to sort of break things down and and like you know, deprogram. Yeah, I can that, imagine that you would... like saying, "Hey, what do I want to do next with my life?" And, and you're like, "Hey, I'm going to start a adolescent transportation service." Yeah. Right. What? And yeah, I'm gonna do it the right way or, or whatever the case is. That um it didn't work out. I mean No. No, and it and it I think it uh further damaged him in some ways. Of course. Because he just I mean he reached out to me, but the idea that like it's really gonna happen, he's really gonna kinda go on the record about what Are you he sure is that this person is who he says he is? No. Okay. Um, no, but I mean, I had a. I spoke with him directly on the phone for about half an hour. Yeah. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I believe him. Like. Yeah. He, he wasn't saying it like you mean like. You think he, like was he like a double agent kind of like. Or, or just know, like someone like who's just trying to get on a fucking podcast, or just someone who saw something on Reddit or saw something, you know. I don't know. Well, that would be a, I think that would be kind of a stretch to like. Sure. Say that you were, you were transporting children across state lines and kidnapping them, yeah. kidnapping them at night. Uh, yeah. With or without parental consent, apparently. Like, I don't even, I don't even know. Like, but right. he asked me to bill him as an interview with a human trafficker. Right. Like in, in order to, create like uh, a more clickable link like I'm like right. okay all right like you really obviously want to get this out there if you're willing to yeah um, promote yourself as such yeah and I, so I, I get the fact that he wants to remain anonymous and and then I looked up at his the pseudonym he used mm -hmm. um, Tommy Marcano mm -hmm. who was like a gangster I mean, huh. Like some old, 
old timey gangster guy. So I'm like, all right. It's mm. like, you feel like, like that's you. Oh, wow. Like, so I don't know. It's gonna, I think it's going to be pretty explosive and interesting to say the least. I do too. I do too. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really fucking awesome. So this is like a real podcast now. I know, right? All of a sudden. All of a sudden, you took like a couple weeks off, and yep. uh, you just blew up. So it's uh, yeah, it's kind of it's good to have you back. I think we needed it's some so time. great to be back. Yeah, we did need some time. I certainly needed some time after Marty's thing. I I needed to think about things, and, and I, I get I, it. I mean that that really fucked me up, and you know I whatever. No, um, right. and I was I was like trying to be supportive. You did you didn't take it that way. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Told me. Just shut everything down. Shut it down, man. <laughs> We're Fuck it. We'll do shot. it live. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Right. Oh, here's a thing that's coming up. Huh. <clears throat> so, uh, remember the, the ab- aborted needle to the groove? Yeah. Channel that my friend Hector and I were going to uh, start doing. Yes. Um. So we're going to do another show. Okay. But on on the same channel on this channel. And the first thing he came up with the idea of wanting to do like uh, like more like <laughs> in depth movie reviews of like like formative Ooh. movie reviews like so the first yeah. thing that we decided to like get into is Animal House. Interesting. Yeah, so we're just going to, like, not, not really like a a standard movie review, but, like, get more in-depth with, like, the characterizations. And sure. and I think I'm going to add in, um, like, some sound bites. Like, yeah. you know, little clips from, like, from the dialogue in the movie and stuff. And um, because that's all... Um, that's all fair use. Like you can do that. You can just throw in a clip here and there, and you won't get uh, mm. you won't get a copyright strike. That's awesome. Because it's, uh, because it's educational and it's like, well, it's a review, and you, yeah. There's, yeah, a, yeah, there's a certain amount of time. There's a time window where you can like play a clip of something, and that's cool. Yeah. So God, uh, Jeanette, yeah, we're gonna do Jean- we're gonna do that. Jean- Jeanette broke down Forrest Gump for me the other day in, in okay. a way that I hadn't thought of, like in a total, like, you know, the, the subtle sort of undertones that we didn't pick up, sort of like, you know, um, interesting. How it kind of like, how it kind of like dismissed and made fun of sort of conspiracies and brushed them oh. over while kind of, kind of making the very most intense physical part about this aggressive black guy at a Black Panther party, you know? Right. And how that sort of, you know, and how the black guy is dead, you know, pretty much for most of the movie. But, you know, Forrest saves saves the mom. The white guy comes and saves the black mom, you know, because it couldn't be any other way. I, I can't oh, remember. It was something like, you know, you know, just how it how it sort of like breaks apart in, in a social way. You know, what yeah. we didn't really see. Oh, yeah, definitely. Fascinating. I was talking to because uh, I, I want to expand, like especially like some of these people that I've either planning on talking to or have already spoken to, like Lily. Yeah. I, I asked her the other day, like uh, if she would want to participate in other ways on the on the show. Yeah. And and she said, well. The only thing I really do is crochet and cook and be a mom. And, <laughs> um, and I, I was like, well, cool. We can do like a crocheting show or something. Oh, that would be so cool. Right. It, it would be a, it would be a real stitch. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. she was all like into it, like, but, uh, because Jeanette is, isn't quite ready. Yeah, um, sure. And I think, though, so, because I've, and I've 
I've had a lot, like, really extensive um, texts with her, kind of, and we're yeah. just kind of sharing our own experiences. And mm. I think it would be fun to have her do something like, like the Forrest Gump thing or another. That would be or brilliant. Really, like, where she could break it down. Yeah, yeah. Like on, on some level and, uh, yeah, like, I, I just really like the, 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 the idea of doing kind of, um, movie reviews as social commentary. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> right. I think it's like, brilliant. I, do I mean, we do that, that. We kind fun. of do that yeah. anyway. I mean, we do that anyway with sort of like when we pun at Arnold and when we pun at Charlie and when we, you know, you know, when right. we, Jamone and the whole, the whole yeah, game. Yeah, but it's all sort of like, it's the same thing. It's just sort of like, you know, well, what did this mean to us? And what did it really, you know, how did it really affect us? You know, and what was really going on behind the wizard's curtain while this was going on? Right. You know, exactly. What did we think? Exactly. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, I think there's a lot of good stuff kind of in the works. Um, we're, you know, kind of expanding out. Uh, our, our point of view because I was thinking about this a lot and I definitely don't want to restrict the channel to any one thing in particular because that's what playlists are for. That's what what? Playlists. Like, yes, absolutely. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. It's like it's like our own little network with separate in, in, like individual channels. Yeah, and it, it kind of reminds me of that thing that you said where, you know, one of the ideas for a podcast was that you would sort of, you would do a podcast and then someone else would do a podcast and they would pass it on to the next person to do a podcast. Do you know what I mean? And it would go around oh. in a circle. Oh, yes. It's so kind of like that. Idea. Our, yeah, our yeah, yeah, yeah. Our worst performing clip ever, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, I right. thought it was brilliant. Like, I thought it was brilliant. It's, it's a bad podcast idea video has been up for like a month, and I think only two people have watched I it. Think and, that, and we may have well, been the two people. Yeah, I think it was us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, no one wants to. No one wants to hear about bad podcast ideas. I wonder. No why. one cares. No. No, but only if they were brave enough to click that link and yeah. learn that a viable idea for a podcast is to interview other podcasters who then interview other podcasters. <laughs> <laughs> like, Jeez. hey, what's your channel about? Uh, well, it's about, uh, I talked to these other podcasters and uh, they interview other podcasters and well, they share with other podcasters, so on, yeah. and so on, and so on. Yeah. So, uh, so I guess the um, the big Nazi rally in Charlottesville was kind of a bust, huh? Yeah, but now they're having it in D.C., like right across the lawn from the White House. They've and they've gotten permission to do it. Right, but are only twenty people going to show up again? Probably. <laughs> With like 200 Antifada folks. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. In, With the Antifa. Including, yeah. I, I don't know who yeah. responded in the crowd, but apparently, uh, there was some, there was some gossip and rumor that, um, that Arnold was there too in disguise. Yeah. 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 I'm here oh, to be the blade flag. Yeah, hello. Yeah, hello. I, yeah. yeah. What was that like? Yeah. So, uh, the first, they had the 20 people there, and they were very white, and you could see them. And then I was dressed as a ninja in the black flag, and I had the, the, the Malatavi cocktails, and the, I was doing the black flag, you know, because I'm part of the anti fear. Yeah. We don't like fear. We're, we're against the fear. We don't like the hunting of the animal or the wearing of the clothing with the fear. So, yeah, it's fantastic. It's 
good. Yeah. I'm glad you had a good time. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. I also wanted to ask you, Arnold, about um, yeah, about the movie project. Um, yeah, hungry the Hungry Games. Yeah, uh, has that been has that been released yet? Yeah, I'm still hungry, and uh, you know, in in the theater soon, I'll be even more hungry. Maybe next week, or you know, maybe sometime in the next coming month or the next year, whenever I feel like it. You know, when I'm hungry enough. I'll eat all the children in front of you, and I'll show it to you. But you must be patient, Marcus. Stop complaining. Right. Yeah. I, well, no, I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm more excited. Yeah. And I also yeah. um, don't be whining. Out, yeah. <laughs> also wanted yeah. to find out who maybe uh, some of your co-stars are. I don't. Yeah. There's not a lot we know about this new yeah. project, and maybe you could uh, shed some more light on. You know, yeah, so, yeah, so basically um, uh, I have the uh, the network of the child trafficking and we got all these kids to come in. They weren't even paid for their acting job and they don't know their fucking goddamn name. Uh, and then there's, uh, you know, there's Rita and then there's, you know, there, you know, there's a few characters, you know, like the Sharon Stone is big. But she's really old and wrinkly and ugly, and she wants to show her booby. But instead, I I eat her children, and she screams. <laughs> and then I, you know, you know, I, I leave to eat the more children because that's the hungry games. Yeah, I see, I see. So a uh, rumor that is that um, that yeah. in a in a kind of a switch or a, a little like nod to a di- another movie. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence plays your love interest. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I was watching this movie, The Sparrow, and, you know, this bitch, she just, she stands up in front of the classroom, and the teacher uh-huh. tells her to fuck the man, and she just takes off all her clothes and stuff, you know, trying to, but the man can't get the erection. And so, you know, it's at this point that I realized, you know, she'd be perfect for my movie, because in my version of the movie, when she do the red sparrow on the table, I can get the erection and I can complete the jab. And you know, I, I fuck the shit out of her and then I eat the children. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, that sounds yeah. really an exciting and different kind yeah, it's, of it's, uh, it's, movie project. It, it reminds me of, you know, like the plot to like, you know, a really good rough novel or, you know, like, you know, you know, like uh, the, 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 the men with the mice and things, you know, and the traits with the various. Yeah, uh-huh. it has like the thick, juicy plot line of every Hollywood Hollywood movie that you ever wanted to see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks. Uh, yeah. Thanks for stopping by and uh, letting yeah. us know about, uh, yeah. again, about your new questions. Hey, uh, so listen, uh, I have to go now and fuck the nanny, and thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Arnold. Wow, he never fails to impress. No, he's he's a good he's a good guest. He comes on and you know he gives potent potent full full fledged interviews and you know they're uncensored and they're totally you know they're his Arnold world. I I mean I would I would call him brave. In fact, to be that yeah I think uh, so too. To be that out yeah. front about about the inspiration, especially for wanting. Jennifer Lawrence in his movie, like yeah, you don't. That's not the kind of thing you hear much from uh, Hollywood types. That no, Tom they're very PC. Say. They're incredibly no, careful. Not. He's right. not. No. No, no, not at all. That's uh, it's really refreshing. God, it's it's, it's humbling. You know? that too. I mean, he's getting yeah. up there in age, and I think that maybe he's just kind of now. You know, considering his uh, quadruple quintuple bypass surgery, that he knows, you know, he's got a limited time left, so he's going to let sure. it all hang out and uh, zero and fuck, fuck the, fuck the yeah. nanny, right. fuck the nanny. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sure, I, yeah. That, that could be a, a new catchphrase for yeah. him, really. You could have a T-shirt <laughs> thing, fuck the nanny. 
Or, oh. or as he rides by down the boardwalk in Venice Beach, you can, people can yell out, fuck the nanny, and like, you know, give a thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Sure. You know? <clears throat> yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. That was, this was kind of a, a condensed version of our normal conversation. Pretty snappy. Yeah, we get right to it, man. We don't fuck around. No, I, hopefully, uh, Hopefully our audience is is uh, uh, recognizing that perhaps we're getting better at this. Maybe. I mean, I feel I hope so. I feel like I'm better at this now, as as opposed to you know three months ago when we were so hesitant to kind of dive into the more controversial subjects. Yes, I guess. Maybe I'm just making that all up. I'm not sure. Uh, I uh, well, I win. think, that, I mean, I think that that your skills have dramatically improved. And listening to you interview survivors, you know, these interviews are brilliant, Marcus. The, no, the I, whole I, idea is to let the people tell their stories uh, without intrusive, like interruptions or uh, or sure. Or judgment, just kind of um, let it all kind of hang out and, and let these people uh, tell their honest stories. And yeah, of course, there are times when I want to ask questions or redirect the conversation sure. to a different topic when when it seems like uh, something's been exhausted. But yeah, uh, yeah, it, um, and those are. You know they're they're really important uh, to me too because because of the feedback I'm getting from people who are listening to them or telling me that they're important and that they're making people feel better about their own circumstances and that they're not alone and Absolutely. there are many many people who care about what they went through and and even now what they're still having to go through once being, you know, back out in the world. And we, we touch on a lot of that. I mean, um, may, may I just add just quickly? I mean, sure. one of the main themes of being someone in a program is not having a voice. And then you get out and you still don't have a voice. And no one believes you. No one wants to talk about it. And no one understands. And, they don't understand. You know, they can't, right, they can't so, conceive of a world like that. Because that's not the way that the world outside these programs operates. Like right. We touched on some of this stuff. Like, you can't come yeah, back out and start did. using coercive tactics to get people to do what you want them to do. No. They're just going to walk no. away from you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so that that's one of the biggest things that I want to kind of get my head around, the idea that, even if even if there was some benefit um, to anything that was going on there, why how could you think that putting anybody, especially a child, in that kind of closed environment would teach them how to function back in, in the real society. world? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, need, yeah. You need to you need to bring society into these programs in a lot of ways. And I don't know if, if that has something to do with a solution to to the problem in general, but to bring more transparency and clarity to what exactly it is that's going on here so that you can begin, or people, us, can yeah. begin to apply pressure to change those environments so that Perhaps one day, uh, programs not like this, but programs of any nature will be more beneficial to the people that are like taking part in them. Yeah, because they're absolutely easily, like programs that actually work. Like it just seems. No, like- no, I agree. I know. I mean, like <laughs> right. you could you could even take the existing structure that you have, like my place, like Heritage. You could take that structure. And you could redo it completely internally 
so that it worked perfectly for those kids. Right. You wouldn't need to do a whole lot either, and it wouldn't cost you a whole lot. Well, it might cost you a little more, but I, I think that it would be way more beneficial to actually have, you know, properly mentally health trained staff all the time with the kids. Well, you, you know? know, you know how we know that these things can work is because of the adult treatment and rehab centers. Mm. They operate quite differently. I mean, there's still mm. the shadiness and there's like, you know, corruption in any field that is just kind of part of General. doing business yeah. in a lot of ways, but sure. But they're, you know, to a large degree in a lot of legitimate treatment centers for people with problems, for adults with problems of many different kinds, there's actual benefit. And that doesn't involve mistreatment and coercion. Right. Like if, right, if, if any, if any, like, self-respecting down and out adult went into some like, and they, they exist, but in general, they, you know, you go into some kind of rehab facility and you're treated with due respect and yeah. understanding that, that yes, you, you may have a problem, but doesn't mean that you're a bad person and all yeah. of that stuff. Like, yeah. let us help you figure out how to live your life back in the real world. And here's some real life scenarios that you're going to encounter. Here's what's going to happen. And we're going to go like check this avenue out and, and yeah. see where that leads you. And like all of those things that seems to be like sorely missing from the, the children's programs. I haven't heard, because thus far I haven't heard anything regarding anything like that. Like, yeah. it's all just like, you're here, follow our rules, because if you don't, you're going to die. Or you're and it, and, be it, kicked and out. it's so, it's like, it's like within the first 24 hours, you experience so much trauma, and there's just so much that you are to take in and understand by just sort right. of like touching the hot, hot iron over and over again and get, you know, being hurt. That sort of, you know, even over the course of the first three weeks, it's so much you're take, taking in. You're seeing so much trauma. And it's just, like, overwhelming. It's not like where you come into to rehab and, you know, you're understood. And, and you know, it's right. understood that, you know, you need – you will probably need a bit of time before you can get back on your feet. You'll probably need a bit of time to, like, at least, you know, come off of the drugs that you're on, you know, but before you can actually, like, function in any way. You know, I'm sure that's understood by your your places. Sure, you know? even in even in like um, you know, uh, like it's so funny because I want to like say, well, as bad as they might be, like psychiatric yeah. hospitals, mm-hmm. adult mm-hmm. rehabs, mm-hmm. Um, anything that involves like going away to solve a problem, and you're going to be in a in a facility. They don't measure up to the brutality that that teens face and, and younger children are, are face in in their own environments. It's right. uh, it's mind blowing to me that that is somehow acceptable, or yeah. if it's not acceptable, hidden so well that people don't know the truth. Right. It's just like, what? How can that even be? But it is, of course. And it's widespread, and it affects everybody. Because yeah. there are thousands of kids who go through these programs and then get released back out into the world, and the people that they come in contact don't know the experiences that they've been through. And because of those experiences, they behave in a particular way yep. that affects everybody. It's amazing to me that, like, it's amazing to me that, like, this started with me sort of just mentioning straight on a farm to you once, you know, and just sort of, oh, like, right. saying, yeah, you know, I had no idea. 
like, you know, I think people have a general idea, like, oh, like, maybe, I, I don't know for sure, but. But they don't understand yeah. the complexity and sort of the levels of it and sort of the levels of how, how big it is and how, how common it is. You know? No, when you talk about boarding schools in general, right? People think, oh, yeah. those Tuffy. are for, yeah. those are for rich people who, like, want to send their kid away to real school. Yeah. Uh, because they're wealthy enough to not want to bother with their child. And, yeah. and oh, 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 they might get a, they might get a smack on the hand with a ruler perhaps, or they're, oh, they're gonna be strict, but, but wow, look how, look how straight they're standing up now, and they're, they have all this, right. like, newfound, like, respect for authority, or they, or now they understand the whole, like, game of society in some ways, because now they have this special knowledge, because they went through this strict program, and people right. are like, oh, oh, wow, you went, like, wow, that's kind of, kind of cool even. Like, but that really isn't the truth. What this is. Because and the, the it's not. This is either. Because there are schools yeah. like that where, sure. where really wealthy people like to ship their kids off to go to some special school. Where, yeah. Uh, like, like West Point, right? But that's like the same. Right. I mean, that's. Military academy. Well, it, yeah. Or like where, where Marty went. You know, he went to a really, he went to the place that Zuck went to. You know, the, okay. the, the high school, or the boarding school, the, the adult boarding school, or the adolescent boarding school that, that, oh, I don't know where it would be, it would be the high school boarding school that, that Zuck went to. You know what I mean? Right. So it's his a focus very different. Wasn't, wasn't even on where he went to. Like. No. Because, because where he went to, was, okay. was fine. They they weren't using coercive <laughs> thought reform on him. He was still allowed to be. You know, regardless of the structure of the school, when school is over, I'm sure they could all hang out together and chill or do homework or whatever, but I'm sure that they could do it together and have their own sort of time together. You know? Right. So that seems you know, to be like the missing missing piece of knowledge like that that we're not we're not talking about like a strict environment. We're not talking about a rigorous environment. Uh, we're certainly not talking about an environment of learning or preparation to to go on to um, new chapters in your life. We're talking about no. We're talking. We're, we're talking about and coercion and abuse. We're talking about coercive thought reform, aka brainwashing camps. That's what we're right. talking about. Yeah. You know, there's no if ands or buts about that. What's going on in these places, if there's a level system alone where you have to earn individual human rights by participating in the program, however that is, and you have to attain these rights by working up this, this level system, that is coercive thought reform. That is brainwashing. That is bullshit, and that won't work. Right. Some of the stuff that we're talking to Bill about is yeah. that – as you as you level up and get into like a like a, a more senior position, yeah. So then the pressure is coming, still coming down from the top, from staff and from the administration on you to then correct the behavior of the younger About kids. It. Yeah. So or, or not, getting, not. It's not even younger kids. I mean, that's a good term for it. Right. Okay. Okay, but okay. It, it's simply someone who's who's gone down in the level system. So, right, right. I mean, at times I had fourteen-year-olds telling me what the fuck to do gotcha. when I was seventeen. You know, I mean, like, right. okay, yeah. So, but uh, it's not. It's not. It's bad enough when you're new and you're being yeah, you're being groomed and and enforced into a certain type of behavior, but then as you progress through these levels, then you're uh, complicit. You become forced to comply with the brutality that you've already been through. Because yes, if you yeah. don't, if you don't, you're gonna you're gonna slip down levels, and all that weight is gonna like come down on you again, and probably in even a harsher manner because you fail you failed. Right, but also like, like oh, to you use used to a different be here, but to, now you're here. To use a different word, I like sympathize. You begin okay. to sympathize. 
because you have right. to sympathize with the abuse and you have to then become the abuser. That's kind yeah. of, that's the Patty Hearst twist on this and that's what really fucks with your head. And that's like right. one of the things I really, really struggled with, Marcus, when I got out was trying to figure out if when I saw staff restraining other kids or when I was being restrained, was that abuse or was that therapeutic? And, mm -hmm. and like, the, the mind fuck of, like, trying to unravel whether this was, you know, it took, it took years. And then it took me going into therapy and talking to a therapist and having a therapist say, listen, I wouldn't work as a psychologist. I would never work in a place where I put my hands on my clients or where I was allowed to. And so, therefore, it's abuse. Mm -hmm. And and generally speaking, when you have an adult, you know, physically restraining a child or, or slamming a child or abusing a child, that's abuse. It's just abuse. There's no other way around it. Right, but, but it's often... It's often condoned. Like, there's, yeah. there was a circumstance where my 17 year old stepdaughter was at home. She lived with her dad. Yeah. And, and she was not complying with his wishes for her to, to do her homework. So okay. he slapped her hard in the face. Okay. Okay. And it left a, it left a bruise on her face. Yeah. So she came back, she came to my house to, to yeah. talk to her mom and I about, look what my dad did. And, and so we asked her, what do you want to do? And she said, I want to call the police. Okay. So we did. The yeah. The police met us, the, the, this police officer met us in a grocery store parking lot. Uh, looked at her face, noted that there was a mark there, brought out his little book of laws and read to her and us that it was totally acceptable for the parent to apply any sort of quote unquote reasonable force to get the child to comply. The, and, <laughs> And this was in Oregon. And he also said that, that other states are even more lenient. Like, yeah. um, Utah is that, much worse. That you can, you can do whatever you want. But, yeah. But if she had struck him back, that would have been, that would have been a crime. That would have been assault. Oh, like if the from daughter her? hit the dad, if the daughter hit the father, that would have been assault. But the dad hitting the child is okay. And in fact, it gets worse. Wow. In, in Oregon, a parent can assign that authority to any other adult, just verbally. Like, mm -hmm. I can say, oh, this is my daughter. I'm going to, I'm go going to like go over here away from you guys for whatever reason, or this is a school or, or you're a babysitter, and uh, you have permission. It's that you don't even have to verbally give the permission. It's it's implied that if if this young person isn't complying with your wishes, you can you can force her physically to comply, and and that's totally within uh, uh, the rule of law. And there's there's no remedy. It's it's totally acceptable. So. And, and people are like, what? I need to pass a documentary on to you that you should watch. It's called Who's Watching the Kids. It's an hour long. Mm -hmm. It's a PBS one. But uh -huh. it, it kind of explains how the laws are so in place for these programs to be able to do what they do. And how right. really there is no there is no recourse. And really, it's all pretty much legal. You know? Sure. Right. And that example I, I gave doesn't help. Because no. you don't even have to be in a quote unquote program to be able to physically uh abuse and harm and force, you know, a, a, 
a child to uh, do what you want them to do. Like, yeah, it's a continuation of of these laws that that most people really don't even know about. Like, I yeah, think the assumption is that probably that's not okay. Or I've heard even like you can't leave a mark on me, or you're going to get in trouble. That's not true. right. No. Just no, the not police true. will come and break yeah. out their little little book and like show you the citation about yeah. how well, of course it's okay. And he was like this cop was amused by it all too, which is very strange. Like he was like, Oh little girl, you have no idea. You should just listen to your dad. Oh. Like, whoa. And um that certainly didn't help. It didn't yeah. help anything. Like she was more upset, more depressed. You know, more at a loss as to her own rights as a human being. Of like, course. Yeah. It's fucking horrible. It's horrible. It is horrible. But, uh, you know, we, all we can do is, uh, keep talking about it and, yeah. and getting, you know, getting people more aware of these situations and, um, because, you know, yeah. one, like I was talking to, uh, when I was talking to, to JC about her talking to, um, the, what, like the facility that she came from, I think it was called Menninger. Like, yeah, it was psychologists and stuff that she, like, was responding back to them about what she had experienced at, um, mm. at Solstice. And they were, like, they kind of just lent an ear and were, like, sympathetic in a sense. But um, it's just it's just one quiet voice, like, in the wilderness. You know, but the other thing is, Marcus, the other thing is, is, like, I was having this discussion, like, someone posted the other day in, in a thread about UCLA. And yeah. I realized that, of course, UCLA was sending kids away to these places, and I was sent away from, from UCLA. And right. that's like UCLA is a huge hub for these these places. They are totally in business with them. Make no mistake. You know, like that's the thing. I would say that Menninger is probably in business with. Well, sure. It makes me wonder. It, you know, it makes me wonder though if the individuals. And I, I can't see how it could be otherwise. Like that, they would seem, it seems that they would have to know. But from from what they were explaining to her is that, oh no, we didn't realize like that it was that kind of place. Yeah. But how could you not know? But no, maybe they know. maybe you. I don't see that. I don't know. There's that. There's a, a really interesting. See, I also there. think. I think there's also a Milgram thing that goes on unless you're actually like in a room where a kids being, you know, restrained by a tech staff, which is right. how it's going to happen. And no one else is there, man. Like I, I often think about this, like my therapist was never there when kids were being restrained and he would like, we'd be in, we'd be in session and he'd get beeps on his, on his, on his beeper yeah. saying, you know, you know, a response team's been called. And he'd just look at it and brush it off and say, oh, no, it's just a response team. It's nothing. You know, and right. as if it's nothing. So I kind of feel like they don't know. Right. Even the thing about uh, when visitors would come, and she, JC was talking about, like, bringing out, like, platters of food and things like yeah. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shiny and happy so that... When visitors yep. would come, they'd be like, "Oh, wow! This is, this place looks pretty great." Yep, yep. And, then, and that would immediately go away as soon as like the guests had gone. Yeah, I mean, it was the same know, at my place. Right, right. Same shit, man. You know, we had these so that's beautiful the parents. Of. Like, that's yeah, the, that's yeah. The thing, that's the kind of thing that that's why these stories are important because, like, we're learning stuff, and people in general, or they're are learning things that. That they don't get to see. And that, well, like, it, that that's the fuckery, and that, that's the coercion. It's it's when the parents go away, when the eyes are gone, and you're left with the tech staff at the end of the night who have to put the kids into bed, you know, and they've got 14 kids each, you know, to deal with. They, they don't give a fuck. They're not going to give right. a fuck. They just want to go home. 
Right, because they hate their jobs. You know, they're yeah. horrible what they're yeah. doing there. Like, they know that. I mean, obviously. They're not they being that. paid they're anything. Not. They're, they're being paid nothing, Marcus. They don't if they were being paid like something. Right, you know right. Saying? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Anyway. No, this is important. Like, yeah. I know that we kind of wanted to talk about this kind of stuff. And yeah. And perhaps rather I, than at this point sharing your personal story, which it's, it's a good idea to reflect on the, on the things that we've already are learning with these other interviews. Yeah. Because I definitely want to like clip this out and, and call it another, another episode in this series. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, I definitely want to talk. Like, I mean, I love that quote that Bill said about, like, like how the the team becomes the the the, the product, and how oh, right. we're sort of and like it's like Facebook, you yeah. know, because it's very right. like that. That's exactly how it's product, is. right? Yeah, yeah. So therefore, it's not sort of like the same as rehab, where it's like the the treatment is is what's being sold. It's actually the child that are being sold. You know, it's yeah, and and that's that's why I'm really interested in hearing more from this uh, this former transportation guy. Oh, me too. Because yeah. he was, you know, he was the broker. He was right in the middle of yeah, this, probably yeah. making a hell of a lot of money doing this. Yeah, like trans. You know, or you or maybe a, not making a lot, you know, maybe not I, making a lot. I'd be interested to know. It, you know, sure. I think these guys are cheap fucking bastards, and they get the lowest price they can. And they'll of get course. the lowest common denominator, you know. They'll get whoever they can to transport their, their product. That's, you know, I don't think you're going to fuck. What do they, what they, what they see on the, they're called adolescent escorts? Yeah. That's horrible. I know it's fucking because the, connota- awful, the connotations man. are quite different. Yeah. Like, like yeah. you're thinking, wait a minute. Like, why would you? Why would you call yourself that? For what? Yeah. Like, like, hey, what do you do? Well, I'm a, I'm a, you know, this, I'm a grown man, and and what I do is I'm a, I'm an adolescent escort. You're like, well, first of yeah, all, you're, saying- not ado- <laughs> you're not an adolescent, and are no. you really an escort? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. There, there was this brilliant film that was. Uh, I didn't see it, but I saw the trailer for it, and it, it, it was made by a Swedish girl, and it's based on the TTI adolescent escort industry. It's, it's shot mm. from the teen's perspective, oh, wow. so it's pretty amazing. Well, the trailer looked amazing. Anyway. I haven't seen it. I can't remember what it's called. It's called something like the, just the right amount of pain or just the right amount of something. It would be interesting to see a, a major uh, motion picture that investigates yeah. this, which from that point of view, like, yeah, um, I, I don't see why not. I mean, I, it would be, that would be one of those <clears throat> Oscar season worthy movies, I would think, <laughs> yeah. you know, shot in like, in um subdued tones you know with real real earnest earnestness yeah that uh and brutality like of course that yeah. would, that would be like an that would be oscar bait like yeah i mean i'd like to, to see i'd like to, to a see different question, I, actually that gets to a different yeah. question is is why not like yeah this is scary that's a scary yeah. question why not look at at this industry, like who, 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 and what would be uncovered? Yeah. Ah, open secrets. I I kill to see a film made about Litchfield because I think like either one of them, either Narvin or uh, Robert, because like, I I think it's the most like insane story. Right. Do it like um, what was the um, and whoever played what him the, what, was this, what was the cigarette movie with uh, Russell Crowe? Oh, that one, The Insider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Insider, right, right. Like, do it like that. Mm, hmm. I mean, I, I think because that look was like this looks like Litchfield. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what came to mind. But but also, 
like the presentation of like someone on the inside you, being, being like a, I don't know, from that point, I of, think, point of view. I, I, I think I'd like to shoot it like in a way that exposes him as the bad guy, but like oh, he's course. focused from his, like he is the main character of the story. Right. So he's right, the right. focus. And, and like, because whoever plays him would, would win an Oscar for sure. Because they have to be incredibly, incredibly seedy, you know, and incredibly, like, dark. And they'd right. have to spin it, too. They'd have to make, you know, convince the, like, almost convince the audience that it's okay that I've got this place down in Mexico and there are kids in dog cages every day and four-point stands in the sun there. You know, it's yeah. okay. You know, that kind of shit. No, it's I okay can't really that talk we talk about some of the stuff that I, I even know. I know. About. Like yeah, yeah. That I've been that I've been told by people I can't say their name about what yeah. he has done and is still doing with yeah, young, yeah. It's young nuts, girls. man. Like it's yeah, yeah. No, I know. No, it's fucking nuts. Like it, it's like what the fuck? He's been like, he's been he, he's like untouchable too. It seems like how how is thing. it like how is it possible? I don't know. Like that's so weird to me. Because he he's nothing special. No, like, that's just no. so weird. But someone is obviously protecting him. Someone, someone big. Yeah, he must have secrets to someone else too, because it's always about blackmail, right? Well, of course, that's the whole structure of the of the system, right? Like, do this or else, or, mm -hmm. or we're gonna, or because we know way. You know, way too much about you now, so if you don't comply, it's all coming out. I'd like to rewatch his deposition, actually. I think I'm going to oh. do that at some point today. Quite interesting. Well, maybe we should maybe we should write a script. <laughs> yeah, know, like, no, totally. How, like, how far do you want to go with it? Like, um, we know, I think, and, and we're developing enough contacts in – in a, a variety of areas that... I mean, I don't even want to, like, show the abuse necessarily or even focus on any of the people in the program. I wanted to be solely around him and how he did business and how he operated to move place to place and all that and how he sort of got away with things. But I yeah. I kind of want... I kind of want it to be, like, noticeable that there's, like, a kid screaming in the background, like, being abused, but, like, he's just yes. walking through and that... But the shot's on him. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Like, like kind of like it's yes, it's um, like this guy is like El El Guapo kind of guy. You know, he's like a he's like a king. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that there are kids being abused. It doesn't matter. Right. It'd be more of like a like it'd be more Hitchcockian, in the sense that that like what you see on the surface is is surrounded by all this implication. Yeah, uh, regarding what's really going on, and, and you don't yeah. necessarily see it, or you you you, right. you, you just catch glimpses of, of yeah, that, exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly because, how it should be, because that's the because in, of reality. With because the, the reality is, he was never a tech staff. He was the big shot. So when he right. came in, he didn't have to go out to those cages where the kids were. He didn't have to perform punishment. Do you know what I mean? Right. He had the. He had the authority and the resources and the power to command other people to do it for him. Right, right, right. So that doesn't need to be, like, the focus. The focus should be on this sort of con man who's, like, constantly mm -hmm. talking to parents and reassuring them to keep them keep sending money, even though things... He, right, he's yeah. changing his names and... Yeah, yeah, right? And, and oh. moving states and moving, like, just shipping kids on buses after programs get closed down. You know, I mean, like Re renaming the, programs in the same place, right? And, and all right, of exactly. Just like getting away with it the entire time, just like a fucking cowboy. You know, it's impressive, actually. You know, like it's fucking amazing. Like bad guys can be impressive. Like you don't have to like them, but no what a fucking story. Like, are you kidding me? That this is actually happening. It's still going happening? on. It's still going it's on. It's still going on. It's not something that, that happened. It's, like, going no, on. Right. Exactly. And, um, well, you know, let's uh, 
<laughs> this is so it's so crazy. Let's try to stop him. <laughs> All right. You know, with whatever me, little means we yeah. have. Let's, yeah, 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 let's yeah, right? stop Marvin Narvin. Litchfield, Sheffield. Browning. Sheffield. Litchfield, Browning, Litchfield, someone, Narvin, Marvin, Marvin, Narvin. Apparently his first name is also Nate, too, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, okay. Well, I think that's a great place to, uh, to close out. Yeah. Today. And, um, yeah, this is definitely going into the, uh, the quote unquote survivor series. Because, cool. Because this is the stuff that, like, some of the survivors, well, I mean, if I were speaking to them about all this, yeah. the interviews would go on for three hours. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that's too long. Like, yeah. So, uh, so this is good because it, 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 we look, we're looking back at, like, some of the highlights of the people that I've spoken to already. Yeah, some of, some of whom you know, and I do. Um, and get, like kind of just highlighting, you know, some of their experiences, and then relating it to the power structure that is overseeing all this, and in Litchfield and other people like that. So, hey, and Marcus, would you possibly plug uh, the Wasp Survivors website? You know, it's just a good hub for anyone like. Getting out and, and fine. I think so, but you know, whenever, I don't know, but whenever you put the thing down at the bottom or whatever, just make sure that yeah, there's, sure. you know, a link to that, you know. And what is it? Lost, I think it's what? WWASPS Survivors dot oh, com, I believe. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, of course. Of course. Thank you so I mean, much. I, I, I'm actually getting better at that at the, at the, in the description box. Well, yeah, I, you're doing great. I, I started putting other links in there, um, like to um, Lily's book and uh, yeah, I saw the, uh, the Heal Project or, or what's yeah. it called? Um, Heal. Anyway, Heal, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, a couple other things. So yes, uh, we'll do that. And uh, this has been uh, it's, it's like a special edition of the video special podcast. edition. Yeah. Wow, okay. we went we went from really uh, kind of lighthearted to really fucking serious. Yeah, yeah. That's All usually right. our All way. Right. We'll talk to you soon, friend. All right, brother. Love you, man. Bye. Bye. You too.